Uh, our, our next speaker is uh, Vinod Papalaju of TI. Uh, Vinod is a senior design engineer um, at TI. His presentation is on the use of system verilog UVM based IP verification environment at SOC level. Um, Vinod is a senior design engineer at Texas Instruments. He has over seven years of experience in a different field of design verification, such as low power, emulation, and coverage-driven verification. He has a master's degree from IIT Bombay in systems and control. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. So, uh, so far today we've been hearing this reuse, reuse, so it actually sets up the base for my presentation. Uh, sorry about the date, in fact, uh, I reuse the presentation itself from one of my earlier conferences. So this is the outline. So first is the problem description, then uh, the methodology that I'm proposing, and then analysis and conclusion. So as uh, as you know, the associate design verification, it uh, involves seeking the integration of all the IPs plus simulating some of the use case scenarios. So the later part involves uh, using some driver or a BFM inside your SOC test bench. Okay, so now, if you take a typical SOC, you have multiple such IPs. And, uh, this this part will be significant for those IPs which are like uh, homegrown or newly integrated into the SOC. So, developing such a test bench model per module is not easy. So, one of the uh, existing approaches to reuse the uh, uh, take the bench that is so after all that IP has to be uh, verified at a module level, right? So, you why can't you reuse the same thing at the SOC? So that, that approach is existing. So now uh, the actual problem description. So in, uh, these days UVM is one of the, uh, it is in fact the popular environment for verifying standalone modules. So, but if you apply the same uh, thought process, like about reusing the same IP environment, but if you look at there is no proper guidelines defined to reuse the UVM environment at a source level. So, the, this work is aimed at addressing this problem. So I'll be discussing about the challenges and uh, the solutions we found out while uh, trying to reuse this environment at uh, SOC level. So some of these are like connecting the environment itself at the SOC, then uh, synchronizing the uh, environment operation with that of the CPU at the SOC. So here at the SOC, most of uh, the SOCs will be controlled by your microprocessor or the ESP based controllers, right? So you need to synchronize the IP environment operation with your mostly C or C++ based uh, environment. So the next thing is simulating the actual test scenarios themselves at the SOC. This is this is something on a generic system where log based UVM, so I think most of you might have known, so I'm just uh, reiterating what is there. So system verilog, you know, is a unified design uh, specification verification languages. So this is like used across multiple domains. All your simulators support it and it, it doesn't uh, require any licenses or any additional simulators. Now the UVM is open source, so it uses the TLM based architecture and uh, which helps in uh, reusing most most of these components across multiple IPs. So I've taken uh, it, taken a typical uh, environment. Uh, at least this is the one something that I've used my uh, in my project. So if you see, this is a, uh, the DUT is there. And, uh, the DUT typically had two interfaces that needs to be tested. So one is the IP specific interface. For example, if you take I2C or UART or something in generic uh, protocol, right? So the I2C protocol will be, I'm calling uh, the I2C protocol as the IP interface. On the other side, uh, the IP has to be controlled by your uh, system level bus, so that I'm calling it as system interface. So we should be having, in, 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 in such a case, we should be having two, in, uh, two agents, one for the IP interface, the other for the system interface. So each agent will have your typical driver, sequencer, and monitor. And there is a virtual sequencer that basically controls the sequences, uh, the, uh, the both the sequences. So where your test sequence will be uh, driving some inputs. So your virtual sequencer will channel the sequences to the respective sequencer. So this is the this is the engine where your test sequence will run and we basically channel your uh, different stimulus. So the sequencer will take the stimulus and pass on to the driver, where the driver will be. Uh, driving these, uh, taking the stimulus and driving the respective protocol. 
and monitor as usual it will monitor the incoming data on the interface but that's the typical operation of any system very log uh, UVM based environment so you now the challenges is first is uh, making the environment reusable at SOC so first thing is not all your components in the IP environment are needed at the SOC right so if I go back here uh, I won't be reusing my, I won't be using my system interface agent altogether so how to get rid of it at the SOC so what I did was pass on a parameter that controls the construction of the agents so if you guys are familiar with QVM so there is there are some configuration uh, variables which are used in the construction phase itself uh, like uh, is active is passive uh, part of the UVM so uh, use a condition assignment in the environment so use these parameters to uh, control the construction of the agents themselves and keeping the condition always true will ensure no effect on the IP verification so in IP keep that parameter always true so IP will, uh, will, will be unaffected so this is this is the first part so the uh, next is simulating a complex scenario at the SOC because the communication between the CPU and the sequencer so at the IP environment you have the virtual sequencer which basically uh, controls the channeling of the multiple uh, controls the operation of these two sequencers but coming back to the SOC uh, you won't be having these virtual sequencer at all so all you have is a single sequencer so how to how to uh, overcome this thing is define a set of triggers in the IP in interface so at the IP level this will be something like a dummy trigger you won't be using it at all at the IP environment so keep them unconnected for your IP verification now uh, define a handle to this interface as a virtual task in your sequencer virtual sequencer so I'll show you what I meant by a virtual task here uh, so this is something that uh, I, I took the liberty of UEM when this is uh, something that I defined uh, and unless you call this this being a virtual task unless it is called this virtual interface will never be assigned to your sequencer so at the IP level because you're not calling this task your uh, virtual sequencer will be unaffected so the next thing is is your associate pins will be different so this is something generic where uh, the pins that will be coming out of your uh, IP will be uh, will be IO marks and it will be going through all that so you got to have a very low wrapper at the uh, uh, around your environment so that wrapper should map your IP interface to the associated so this is something generic then your CPU or a DMA will replace the system interface agent so as I said earlier uh, most of your systems will use ARM based microcontroller ARM based processors or BSP based processors so so your agent here, system interface agent, will, will be replaced by your CPU or a DMA. So as I said, you need to pass on a parameter at the compile stage that will be that will get the uh, build of the system interface agent. So remember this this parameter which is kept as always true at the IP. Uh, this will be disabled at the SOC, which means I'm making the agent as passive. So it actually uh, uh, doesn't drive any data on the drive on the interface itself. Then keep the system interface pins unconnected. So basically, the interface itself will be will not be connected to your actual agent, and they will be connected to your CPU interface. So now uh, coming to the simulating a scenario at the SOC, uh, as I said, there should be proper communication between the CPU and the IP sequencer. Now that we don't have the virtual sequencer. Remember the set of triggers that I have defined as dummy triggers in the IP interface. Now I should be using those triggers at the SOC, and I should be using those triggers to synchronize operation between my CPU and the IP interface sequencer. So as I said, I already defined a virtual interface to the sequencer in the IP interface. So now call that uh, virtual task at the SOC level. Uh, so that the virtual, so that the interface, the sequencer get the access to the interface, and uh, because the sequencer get the, got the access, you can access that uh, uh, interface itself from your uh, from your test sequence. So I'll be showing an example of that. 
So using using those uh, uh, triggers, you can synchronize the operation of the CPU and the IP sequencer. So one trigger should be used by your uh, CPU, and the other trigger should be used by your IP sequencer. So using this, uh, the only thing that differs is your test sequence, which is it's your top level. Uh, you cannot be using all your uh, random operation here because your CPU, uh, because of multiple constraints like your CPU runtime plus, uh, you don't want to be uh, stressing uh, so much at this SOC level. So it's only the test sequence that will be the different, but all the uh, protocol specific sequences and uh, low level drivers, you can be reusing this, uh, them from the, your IP environment. This is what I meant. Uh, remember your earlier diagram, so now uh, the system interface agent is replaced by my CPU. And also you can see the there is a uh, handle from the virtual sequencer to the interface with, with uh, some control triggers. So these control triggers uh, will be unconnected at the uh, IP level they will be connected to set up GPIOs at your SOC level. So this is some example test sequence at the SOC. As you can see the first thing is the uh, test sequence where I'm calling my uh, connect interface which is the virtual task which I listed below. So this is uh, assigning my uh, interface to my sequencer and that task I'm calling from my test sequence and as you can see, the test sequence will have something, I define something known as associate trigger, which is connected to indeed a GPIO. And I'm using that trigger to actually wait for a signal from my CPU. So unless I get the signal, I won't be executing my IP sequence. Similarly, uh, what I haven't listed here is your, you can drive, uh, you can force some, uh, if your IP sequencer wants to communicate to your uh, CPU, you can use another trigger you can drive that signal and you can actually let your CPU to wait for the signal or the interrupt on the GPIO to wait for the signal from your IP sequencer to move on. So in this way you can actually use your IOS itself to communicate between your uh, IP environment and SOC. So I've implemented this uh, this methodology on uh, a homegrown IP which I did the IP verification and I had to do the SOC verification, so I took the same uh, IP environment and I did these changes and I'm able to use the same environment for both IP and SOC verification. Because the IP being a custom protocol, I couldn't find the BFM or anything, so I had to use this and actually fetched me very good results. So it's uh, it's only the test sequences that differ and I was able to com uh, simulate some complex use case based scenarios at the SOC using this environment. Uh, and the effort spent on making this environment reusable is very minimal. It's roughly around less than 2% of the total environment uh, effort. That. In conclusion, uh, you can, if you follow this uh, methodology, you can use any UVM based. Uh, so this is just an effort to uh, throw up challenges that I face. I think there will be multiple such uh, challenges because I was not using the to uh, complete uh, feature set of the UVM, I was mine was pretty simple, uh, but uh, what I expect is this will this will uh, uh, trigger the thought process to reuse the UVM based environment at the SOC. Uh, limitations of the proposal: if you want to port this thing to FPGA or uh, any, or Palladium boards, you cannot use it because of the constraint on the UVM library. I think that's all I have here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vinod. Very good talk. Uh, have we got any questions for Vinod? Uh, I've got one question. In terms of the um, limitation on FPGA Palladium, uh, we've, I, I, when I've done VIP in the past to be put on FPGA Palladium, a lot of it's about making sure the, um, the driver itself is synthesizable and have a schema interface between the driver and the sequencer. Have you, have you looked at that? Or not? Uh, no, because, because of the way I was using, I was using certain weight statements and all okay. in, inside my sequencer. So, yeah, if, if I really want to try in that, uh, that way I could have succeeded but then because of the constraints I had and that they had to use it so I was not able to. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you Arthur. It's an interesting paper. It's a real challenge to take VIP from IP level up to the SOC level so thank you very much. Thank you.